Hello and welcome to St. Andrews, where we are a community of faith united by the love of Jesus Christ, building disciples through worship, study, prayer, and service. Welcome to worship for July 25th, 2021. Let's open with a word of prayer. Holy Spirit, speak to us this day through the words of Scripture. Open our hearts to hear your whispering. Open our hands to accept what you have to give us today. Unstick our feet to move and follow your leading. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 22. Listen for God's word. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature, ch nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him, in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of the two thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have been given access in the one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in ballet, the dancers each strive to be graceful. By this, I mean that they want to make their movements crisp, clean, and seem as though they are the easiest thing in the world to do. When I was a teenager, I went to see the New York City Ballet. It was a hot evening in the summer as we went into that cool theater. and Our seats were up in the balcony, and I had a good view of the stage so that even though I couldn't see the features of the dancers' faces, I would be able to see their movements well. The moment finally came when the haphazard tuning of the orchestra was halted by a tap from the conductor's baton. I held my breath as the curtain rose and the first notes of the ballet were played. The dancers twirled and leapt. They executed difficult steps all on point, and I was enraptured. Near the end of the act, the whole ballet corps was on stage, and from the balcony I could see that their lines were perfect. They were all dancing in perfect synchronicity. They moved as a whole and made every step look easy. And when the curtain fell, I was silent for a moment. 
Being a dancer myself, I knew that what I had just seen was not easy. It wasn't something that just happened. It had taken hours upon hours upon hours to perfect those moves. It took strength and determination to be on point for that length of time. And I knew it took a lot of work to be graceful, to look full of grace on the stage. And Paul, in the letter to the Ephesians, tells them that they have been saved by grace through faith. And grace is a beautiful word that can have many nuances. It can be the grace of a ballet dancer. It can be the blessing before a meal. It can also be the work of God. And this chapter begins with a description of who we have all been. We've all been separated from God. We've all done, done or said things that were not in line with Christ's teachings. And that's why we confess our sins each Sunday, because we dare to admit that we have failed. And then after this description of how we've all messed up, come two of the most powerful words in Scripture. But God. This is the intentionality that we talked about last week. This is God acting, God choosing to act in our lives and in the life of humanity as a whole. So now if we were going to diagram some of these long sentences in this letter, it would take a PhD in grammar. So by cutting it down just to the bare roots of the sentences, this is what the first three sentences of this chapter say. You were dead. But God, out of love, made us alive together with Christ. And remember that throughout this letter, the you is usually plural, and it's plural here too. So it's not just you, individual you, were dead. It was all of us. God didn't act just for you, singular individual, but for us. By grace, you, plural, were saved through faith. It was as if the grace of God working through us moves us into God's salvation. Now, if I can mix up the messages of or the meanings of, of grace for a little bit. When I was watching that ballet corps move as one, if there was one dancer that did not have grace, the effect would have been lost. It took the grace of each and every individual to make the grace of the dance complete. God's grace working through us as a whole is what creates community. God's grace moving and turning and leading us together is what holds us together. This letter as a whole speaks to the community of faith. It offers ways in which we can live out our life together. It's a letter calling for unity, but not uniformity. In the first chapter, Paul gives thanks for the ways that God blessed, chose, and adopted us into the family of God. And now we begin to get into how we can be and live our lives as the family of God. And that's where this reminder of grace comes, on, comes in. It's a reminder that it's grace's job and grace's action that has brought us together. The glue that holds the community of faith together is grace. It is grace sent and directed by God. That's the glue. And that's grace's job in the church, to hold us together. The Common English Bible translates the last verse of this section as, Christ is building you into a place where God lives through the Spirit. I like that translation. It, it emphasizes that it is Christ who is doing the building Christ is the one building us. Remember that you is plural. Christ is building us, all of us together, into God's spiritual house. And this house that God is building us into is one that is full of grace. It is grace that God gave us and formed us into community. It is grace that we extend to one another that holds us together. Because that's grace's job to hold us together it is it isn't easy to be graceful it takes work but it also takes a lot of letting go it takes letting go of the false idea that we can go it alone it takes letting go to be the community of faith it takes letting go of these false idea that we are the authors of our own salvation 
to be a community full of grace, we let go of the idea that we are ultimately in charge. And so then we let God work through us. The gracefulness of a ballet dancer on stage looks effortless, but it is a lie. The gracefulness that looks effortless takes work. It takes patience. It takes determination. No less for grace in the community of faith. Living graceful lives in community takes work. But without grace, there is no community walking in the path of God. So practice letting go and let grace permeate our lives together. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are a God of abundance, and you open your hands and feed us in due season. You satisfy the desires of every living thing. And so we lift up our prayers to you, holy God, for you are the provider of answers. We pray for the families of nations, for the families in our own communities and our own families, that they may have all they need to live in peace and harmony. We pray for all churches and denominations that we may find ways of cooperating to care for the earth, to care for those in need, to be full of grace and give glory to you in all that we do. God, you are near to all who call out to you. Use us to answer the call of those who are hungry and suffering. We pray for the victims of war and violence and natural disasters, for those who have no home over their head, for those who are seen as the fragments of society. Lead us, O oh Lord, to reach out in love to these, our siblings in Christ. We pray for the sick and those facing the end of their days. May Christ dwell in their hearts through faith, and may they know that they are rooted and grounded in your love for us. We pray this all in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. May you go out and live graceful lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.